In this video, I'm going to break down principal component analysis, one of the most powerful techniques for making sense of high dimensional data. First, I'll explain what PCA actually is, what a principal component really means, and how to interpret the results to reduce dimensionality without losing important information. Then, in part two, we'll dive into how these components are constructed and the mathematics behind it. Let's get straight to it. Hi, I'm Harry, I'm an AI master's student here in the UK, and PCA was one of those topics that didn't fully click for me at first. I could understand what it was trying to do, but less so how it worked, or what each principal component really represented. So hopefully this video saves you the time I spent struggling to figure it all out and helps make PCA feel a lot less like magic. PCA is about transforming your data by finding a new set of axes for it. These become your new features called principal components. Each of these components is simply a combination of your original features, but they're constructed in a way that first captures as much variance or separation between the data points as possible, and second, that each principal component is completely uncorrelated with all the other components. By forcing the components to be uncorrelated, PCA makes sure that each one adds new information, i.e. it captures a unique pattern of variation in the data, rather than just repeating what a previous component already captured. What's powerful about this is that since we're constantly capturing as much variance as possible in each component and doing so uniquely in each one, this naturally creates a ranking. The first principal component, PC1, captures the most variance. The second, PC2, captures the most of what's left, and so on. For example, say you started with 50 different features in your dataset. After running PCA, you'd get 50 principal components. But thanks to this ranking, you might find that the first five components alone capture, say, 90% of the total variance. This means, instead of working with all 50 original features, you can reduce the dimensionality to just five components components and still preserve most of the important information. An important thing to realise here is that the principal components don't usually have a clear intuitive meaning at first, because each one is a linear combination of your original features. In other words, they're made by mixing together the original variables in specific proportions to create a new axis. These proportions, the weights assigned to each original feature in forming a principal component, are called loadings. Think of loadings as telling you how much of each original original feature contributes to a given principal component. If a feature has a high positive or negative loading, it means that feature plays a big role in shaping that component. For example, if you're analysing survey data and PC1 has high positive loadings for confidence, leadership and outgoingness, and low loadings for things like timidity and quietness, then PC1 might be capturing a kind of extraversion-like pattern, even if PCA didn't explicitly label it that way. So while the principal components themselves may seem abstract, looking at the loadings gives you a window into what each component might be representing in terms of the original data. Now all of this naturally leads to a deeper question. How are these principal components actually constructed and why is variance the thing we're trying to capture in the first place? To answer that, let's look at what PCA is really doing behind the scenes. Imagine each data sample in your data set as a point in a p-dimensional space. For simplicity, let's consider the case where p equals 2, meaning each sample has two attributes, and can be represented as a vector x, where x1 is its value for attribute 1 and x2 is its value for attribute 2. PCA finds a new axis or direction, which is a unit vector u, such that when we project the points x onto this axis, the spread or variance of the projected values is maximised. To project a point x onto u, our principal component, you drop a perpendicular line from x onto the line defined by u. Calculating the dot product or inner product between x and u gives you the magnitude of the new projected point, which is how far along the direction of u the point lies. Importantly, this scalar tells us how much of x is aligned with u. The more aligned x is with u, the larger the dot product. This is because the dot product involves the cosine of the angle between them. So when the angle theta equals 0, i.e. the vectors are parallel, the original vector x is perfectly aligned with u. It lies exactly along that direction. This means all of x's magnitude or information is captured along u and none is lost. The dot product is maximised in this case because the cosine of 0 is 1. Conversely, if theta equals 90 degrees or pi over 2, i.e. x is orthogonal to u, then cos of pi over 2 equals 0, and the projection is 0, meaning no information from x is preserved in that direction. 
With that in mind, we want to choose a direction U such that the data points XI project as strongly as possible onto it, meaning they're as aligned with U as they can be. So naturally, we want to maximize the total projection of all data points onto U. But there's a problem. The dot product can be positive or negative depending on the angle between XI and U. But we only care about the magnitude, not the direction. So instead of summing the raw projections, we sum their squares. And this formula, the sum sum of squared projections is exactly what variance measures when the data is centered, meaning the data has been shifted so that its average or mean is at the origin. This is because variance is defined as the square distance of data points from the mean. So once the data is centered, projecting each point xi onto a direction u and squaring the result tells us how far that point lies along u relative to the mean. Summing up these squared projections gives us the variance of the data along that direction. That's why in PCA, maximizing the sum of squared projections is exactly the same as maximizing the variance captured along the chosen direction U. Now this sum can be rewritten as the following. The term inside the parenthesis is known as the covariance matrix C. The covariance matrix tells us how each attribute varies with every other attribute across the dataset. So the optimization problem becomes maximize U transpose C U, subject to the magnitude of U being one. We add this extra constraint to ensure U is a unit vector. This is a classic optimization problem. And while I won't go into the full details of how to solve it, since that could be an entirely separate video on its own, the key takeaway is that the solution comes down to finding vectors u that satisfy this equation. And if you're familiar with eigenvalues and eigenvectors, you'll know this is called the eigenvalue equation, where u is an eigenvector of the covariance matrix C, and lambda is the corresponding eigenvalue. The eigenvectors give us the directions, the principal components, and the eigenvalues tell us how much variance each direction explains. For example, in a two-dimensional space, the covariance matrix C is a 2 by 2 symmetric matrix, so it will have two eigenvectors and two eigenvalues. These two eigenvectors correspond to the two principal components. Because C is always symmetric, these eigenvectors are naturally orthogonal to each other. This is important because it means the second principal component isn't just capturing the same variance as the first. Instead, it captures a new independent pattern of variation in the data. And if if we look closely at these eigenvectors, we see that as mentioned earlier, they are just linear combinations of the original features. The values within each eigenvector called loadings indicate how much of each original feature contributes to that principal component. So PCA essentially boils down to performing an eigen decomposition of the covariance matrix of our original data. This process gives us orthogonal directions, principal components that capture the most variance with each component representing a unique pattern of variation in the data. If you found this video helpful, consider leaving a like and subscribing to the channel. Thank you so much for watching.